Route parameters give us a way to add dynamicness to our route definition so that we don't have to manually define a route for each individual identity that's within our database. So for example, without route parameters, in order to have a route defined for a post with an ID of two, we would have to duplicate our post with an ID of one route definition as a post with an ID of two. And the same thing if we have a post with an ID of three. Now, whenever you have thousands of records within your database, that is just not scalable. So route parameters give us a way to have a single route definition that matches the posts with any ID. So to define a route parameter, you start off with a colon and then whatever you want that route parameter to be named is what follows. So in this case, let's do ID. And then we could do the same thing for our put and delete requests as well. So if we save this, head back into our REST client, and we try to send off a GET request for a post with an ID of one, we're going to get back GET single post, which is what that GET request with a post of any ID is sending back. If we change this to a PUT, we're going to get back update a post. And if we send this with DELETE, we're going to get DELETE a post. If we change the ID from one to two, we're going to get the exact same thing. And it's at this point you might be asking, OK, but how do I as a developer determine what the user is sending through as that ID? And within our HTTP context object, there's actually a property called params that we can use to grab that value. So if we replace get a single post with get a single post with an ID of and we do params.id and we need to do ID here because that's the actual name of our parameter. If we had named this identity, we would need to do params.identity. We'll leave it as ID for right now. Let's give that a save, head back into our REST client, send off a get request for post with an ID of two, and we get back get single post with an ID of two. If we change this to 255, we're going to get get single post with an ID of 255. And the same thing applies for our put and delete requests as well. We didn't add the dynamicness, but you can see that the fact that we're getting something back means that that route is matching our route definition. The params object is also available within those HTTP contexts as well. And to show you the different way to go about this, you can just do CTX here and then do deleting a post with an ID of, and then you could do CTX params.id. We can head back and test that. And there we go, we get back 255, we can send a delete request, and we get 255, we can change this to 230, and we get 230. Now there's gonna be some cases where you may or may not have a parameter to define. So let's do another route, let's call this for a get. We'll do this for posts slash topics slash, and then we'll name this route parameter topic. We'll grab our params out of our HTTP context object. And let's return back a string containing topic is, and let's do params.topic there. Let's give this a save. Okay, so there's a couple of things to note here. So first and foremost, the way that we've gone about defining this route parameter means that that route parameter is required. So if we just try to request post topics, this route definition is not going to be matched against. The second issue is we have a get request with any ID within this route definition up here. So actually, if we try to request post topics at this point in time, we're actually going to get back this route definitions handler. So if we actually send that through, let's head into our HTTP client and send through a get request for post topics. We'll send this out and you'll see we get single post with an ID of topics, which is not what we're looking for. So there's a couple of different solutions that we have that we can go about to resolve this. Uh, for right now, we'll go about the ordering approach. So Adonis is going to match against routes from top to bottom of our route definitions, meaning the first route definition that it finds that matches our request, it's going to stop there and use that route definition. It's not going to continue on. So it goes from top to bottom in that approach. So if we move our post topics route definition above, our post ID route definition. So now it will try to match this route definition before it tries to match this route definition. However, we still have issue number two to deal with, and that's the fact that this is required. So to make this optional, all that we need to do is add a question mark to the end of it. And now our topic route parameter is optional, meaning that our route definition will match just post topics. So let's give this a save, head back into our HTTP client and send this off again. And now we're going to get back topic is undefined. And that's because we don't have a topic sent through with, within our URL. If we change this from post topics Adonis and we send this through, now we're going to get topic is Adonis. If we change this to JavaScript, 
we'll get JavaScript. So that's how you can go about defining optional route parameters. So within this route handler, we would be able to check, okay, do I have a param with a name of topic? If I do, let's get data for that particular parameter. If I don't, let's get data for all topics. The second way that we can go about resolving this duplicate route definition is by adding validation to our get request with any ID. So since our IDs are all numeric based and our topics are all going to be string based, we can tell our route definition to only match numbers for this particular route. And then we could do the same for strings with this particular route. So in order to add validation, we can string off of this get request. And I'm actually just going to clean this up a little bit here. OK, so I added brackets to all of our arrow functions. And then I also added the async keyword here as well for the future. So in order to add validation to this route definition here, we can chain off of its route definition an additional method called where. And then within the where, we can tell it that we want to apply this validation against the ID parameter. And then as the second argument, we can provide it a regex string of whatever validations we need to apply. So in this case, we would probably want to do something like a, a numeric based check. So we would do something to the extent of, of this. Now this route definition, whenever it tries to match, it's going to check the ID route perimeter against this regex matcher, which will check whether or not our ID is numeric based. So if we save this, and note that our topic route definition is now below our get request route definition. And we head back into our HTTP client and we try to get just post topics. We send this off. We're going to get topic is undefined, which means that whenever we requested that route, it successfully bypassed this route definition and skipped down to this one because our validation succeeded. Again, if we were to get rid of this route validation, go back and re-request that, we're going to get, get single post with an ID of topics, which is not what we want. So our validation here is doing its job. Now we can go down to our topic route definition and do the same thing since we know our topic is going to need to be some type of string and not numeric based. So we could do aware topic and then provide it a regex matcher, which will check whether or not our topic is alphanumeric and is separated by dashes, essentially checking to make sure that it's some form of a slug or a URL safe string. So we can give this a save, head back into our HTTP client, give this another request, and we're going to get topic is undefined, which means that it's matching OK if our topic is not provided. But if we provide some type of topic, let's do Adonis-5, give this a request. Now we get topic is Adonis-5. If we change this hyphen to a space, send this off, we're going to get routes not found. If we change it to an underscore, we're going to get routes not found. And that's because our route validation is making sure that the separator is a hyphen in this case. Now, conveniently, Adonis also provides out of the box some common route validations that we might need to do. So in this case, we could, instead of checking with regex that it's a number, we could call route matches number and provide that in place of our regex, which will then check to make sure that this is a number for us. So that would just help make our route definitions just a little bit cleaner. And then for this one down here, we could replace this one with route matchers and then provide it slug. There's also another one for UUID if you use GUIDs in place of numeric IDs. So now if we head back into our HTTP client, so now Adonis's slug validation is a little bit more inclusive. It's going to include underscore. So now if we send this off, we're going to actually match our route definition instead of getting a 404 back. If we change this from an underscore to a hyphen, we're going to get back the same route definition. Now, since route parameters can be any URL safe string here, it could be an ID, which we would want to be numeric. It could be a slug, which we would want to be string based. It's going to provide all route parameters as strings. Now, one of the nice things that these route matcher utilities do for us is in this case, since we're calling number, it's also going to convert our route parameter to a number. So if we change this to type of, params.id and we send off a request for this URL. So let's change this back to posts with two. We're going to get back that it's a type of number. If we were to get rid of this where statement here and we re-request that, we're going to get back string. So this route matcher is also casting our route parameter to a number whenever we verify that the actual value is a number as well. Now you actually don't need to use these helpers in order to do that. So we can actually change this back to our regex and we can provide it an object, provide our regex under the match property. 
And then there's an additional property here called cast, which we can then use to cast our value. So here we need to provide a callback. And then within the callback function, we're going to be provided the value of our route parameter that's within our first where statement argument. So in this case, it's going to be our ID. And all that we need to do is return back the casted number of our ID. So we can give this a save, head back into Insomnia, give this another request, and you can see now we're getting back a number again. Now, as your routes grow, you're gonna be probably referencing IDs a lot. So you might need to provide this for a lot of different routes. This in particular is going to be a useful use case to where we would want to turn this into a global statement. So we always want our IDs to be numeric based and we would always prefer to get them back as numbers. So what we can do is we can actually take this off of the single individual route and we can define this globally directly off of the route module. So we can now give this a save, head back into Insomnia, and we should get back that this is still a number. Again, verifying that if we were to get rid of this global statement, this would be a string. So you can globally define your validations and castings as well. So now any route that has a route parameter with a name of ID will get matched against this casting and validation. So the last thing that we're going to be covering here today is wildcard parameters. So there may be a use case where you don't necessarily know what exactly the path is that the user is going to be requesting. Maybe it's for something like images where you need to actually look into a physical file structure to find a particular file. So for that, we can use wildcard parameters to define that route. So in this case, we could do something like route.get. Maybe we're searching specifically for images, so we could do slash image, and then we could do a wildcard to allow the user to provide anything beyond the image URL. So here they could do image, Adonis, topics, routing, and we would successfully match this route despite the fact that it has multiple different route parameters defined from the single wildcard. So let's go ahead and define our handler here. Let's get our params. And then we can return back our params. And then since the technical name that we provided for this route parameter is star, we would want to access the star parameter. So we can save this, head back into Insomnia, and now let's try to send off a get request for image Adonis test. And let's see what we get. So we get back an array with Adonis and test. So a few things to note here is that first, since we accept numerous different actual parameters under the single wildcard, our value is actually going to be provided within an array. And then each additional route parameter is a separate item within that array. And then they're also in the order that the user requests as well. So you'll see that we're requesting it with our first parameter as Adonis and our second as test. Our array of index zero is Adonis and one is test. If we add on another one and we send that off again, you'll see now topic is added on to the end of that because it is last. So now in addition to just using a wildcard, you can actually use a name parameter in addition to wildcards. So maybe we have our images in this case sorted off to where it's a folder of IMG and then maybe we have the user's ID, and then maybe within the user's ID, it's whatever they provided that folder within. So here we could define a route parameter of ID for the user ID, or we could call this actually user ID, so that's a little bit more defined. So now we're gonna actually have two keys within our parameter. So let's actually just return back the params object at this point in time. So let's go ahead and give this a save. We'll want to add a user ID in front of this and then send this off. So now we're getting back an object since we're just returning back our params and our params have two properties within it, one for user ID and then one with the asterisk for our wildcard parameters. And our user ID has a value of one and our wildcard parameters have whatever is beyond one for the wildcard statement, which in this case is Adonis test and topic. 